In the previous video, we have analyzed a lot of functionalities provided by the React library. And as we have seen, they are often useful for managing the local state of components and its direct children. In this video, we see some of the most famous state managers for the global state management, useful, for example, to share the state across components on different branches of your application, or when you use a router and we need to share something between several pages. In any case, the same techniques are also very useful for managing the local state of one or more components of the same branch. For example, in a particularly complex view, composed of a lot of components, because it makes the communication between components very simple, as some of them provide great tools for debugging. But above all, all the state managers that we analyze are already optimized to avoid unnecessary renders. They take advantage of concepts like the memoization to improve performance, allow us to use well-known patterns, at least in some cases, that are used by a lot of companies and developers, and they are well documented. And most importantly, they have an amazing developer experience. Hi, my name is Fabio Biondi, I'm a front-end instructor from Italy, and I love both Angular and React. Usually I create my content in Italian only, but I decide to create videos in English to improve it and try to reach more people. Anyway, I hope you will like my channel and don't forget to subscribe it. So, let's start with the first state manager. Zustand means state in German and has been created by the same authors of React Spring and React Fiber. It's a micro state manager that can be used as a global and a local state manager. The advantage of our use state is that a state defined with Zustand can be read and written by each component even on different branches. It's very simple. We create a state, which I name uStore, with the create function imported from Zustand. This state can include data, for example a counter, and function, in this case inc, which obviously stands for increment. We can now read the state in every component by using a reference to the store, so we can access to the counter and the function that we will use to update it. Every time a portion of state is updated, only the components that subscribe a specific portion of the state will be rendered and not all the others. In this case, if the state contained other properties, our child would be updated only when the counter changes, and not the others. Let's see an example that handles asynchronous actions. The store initializes the user's array and the pending state. It also contains a couple of asynchronous actions. Load user, for example, sets the pending state to true, that we can use to display a spinner, makes the call to a REST API using Axios, and at the end insert the result into the user state and set the pending state to false. My component can now read and update the state through the useStore function, as we've seen before, but also invoking the getState function, in this case in a useFX hook to invoke the load user action when the component is initialized. In the JSX template, we see how pending is used to show a spinner, while the user's property will be used to display a list of data. From the same creators of Zustand comes Valzio, that means state in Spanish, another micro state manager who uses proxies for state management. Basically, we define our state with the proxy function and through the used snapshot hook, we can retrieve its value in any component. We can also directly update the value of the state as we would for a normal JavaScript object without need to emit an action or call a function. And we can also subscribe to a proxy with a derived functionality and create a derived proxy which depends on other portions of the state. As soon as one of these properties is updated, for example the count property, the derived proxies will also be updated and consequently all the components that use them. Now I want to show you some of the interesting features of Valzio. For example, the ability to access the history of the state or we can perform an undo and a redo operation. We can create a synchronous state that returns a promise and use them via the React suspense component. And we can also use this state outside React by subscribing it in Vanilla.js or in a component of the same page created in other frameworks and libraries. This is very convenient for connecting React with other technologies. Let's talk now about Recall and Jotai, and I use the same slide because they work more or less in the same way. Recoil is a state manager created by Facebook that many of us believed it would replace Redux, which we'll talk about it later. This was not the case, or at least not yet. 
Anyway, the idea behind Recoil inspired the other state managers, such as Jotai, which in my opinion is much easier to use and includes many interesting utilities. And if you are wondering, Jotai means state in Japanese, and it's always created by the contributors of Zustand and Valzio. However, these state managers are based on the same concept, atoms. An atom represents a portion of a state that only needs an initial value, which can be any primitive. We can use these atoms in every component and we will be able to directly read and write them. In this way, all components that use the same atom will be rendered each time its atoms are updated and stay in sync. Just like in Valzio, we also have the possibility to create atoms that derive from other atoms, as I will show you in the next slide. Now, we quickly see the Jotai API, but Recoil is very similar. Let's start with the creation of two atoms, cost and quantity, which as you can see contains just numbers. Obviously, they could also contain arrays and objects. Total atom is a derived atom and it depends on the other two. When the two atoms are updated, I mean cost and quantity, the total atom is also updated and consequently all the components that use it perform a new render. An atom can also return a promise and the interesting part is that the components will be able to use it simply with a use atom hook without the need to use the react suspense component. In fact, we see that in child component we get the value of users which is asynchronous but also total which is the derived atom. The interesting part about Jotai is that it provides dozens of utilities. For example, it's possible to synchronize an atom with the local storage, not only in writing when the value of the atom changes, but also in reading. For example, when we open our application, the atom will already be initialized with the value of the local storage. We can synchronize the value of the atom with the router parameters as we did with local storage. When the atom is updated, the browser URL is updated as well. Or if I open the application from a specific URL, the atom is automatically synchronized and getting the value from the URL parameters. We can also synchronize an atom with an observable for people that love RxJS and reactive programming, just like me. But Jotai includes many other very interesting utilities and I especially love Split Atom, which allow me to manage a collection of atoms in a very comfortable way. I recommend that you take a look of the utility section of the Jotai website because there is a lot of stuff. The next video will be completely dedicated to make an introduction to Redux and Redux Toolkit. Let me know if you liked this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel and turn on the notification to stay up to date of the latest videos. Bye!